I have never seen this nation be this powerful. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be seeing what would happen if Iberian regions were united in 1444. So as you can see it's December 1st 1444 and I've created this situation over in Iberia. You guys seem to like these what if X regions were united, you guys enjoyed the Germany and the Italy ones, so this week we're back with Iberia. So let's go over the map. Now, of course, starting off over here, we have Portugal owning the Portuguese provinces. I did want to split them up, sort of, but literally no one else owns Portuguese provinces. No other nation is here. So that's why we have Portugal. It's literally unchanged. The only thing I changed about them was that I broke their alliance with England, but they seem to have reallied them again, and they've also allied Castile. Going up north of Portugal, we have Galicia owning the Galician cultured provinces. Portugal owns the Portuguese ones, of course. Down south, we have the nation of Andalusia owning the Andalusian cultured provinces. They are Sunni and I did convert all of these provinces to Sunni as well. Going up north we have the nation of Leon owning almost all of the Leonese cultured provinces with the exception of Asturias up here which is owned by Asturias. We also have Cantabria here also owned by Asturias, even though it's Castilian culture. Then we have the nation of Castile, of course, one of the main contenders for the number one spot in this scenario. They own almost all of the Castilian cultured provinces, with the exception of Cantabria. Up here we have the nation of Navarra, they own all of the Basque cultured provinces, and then over here we have the nation of Aragon, owning all of the Aragonese cultured provinces, because they only own this, sort of a byproduct of this scenario is Sardinia and Sicily existing as well, although we won't be focusing on on them that they're just out here because well I can't have Aragon owning this and then we get to the Catalan culture which I actually decided to split among three nations in these three different areas that are present in the Catalan culture up here we have Catalonia owning these provinces over here we have Valencia owning these provinces and right here we have Mallorca owning these three provinces and that is our setup for this scenario none of these nations have cores on other nations you guys said you wanted me to remove that stuff last time so no nation has cores on any other nations we won't be seeing reconquests I also gave all of these guys 1000 ducats 20k manpower 3 stab and 100 prestige I wanted to start them off strong you know what I'm saying and that is our setup what do you think will happen in this scenario will Castile and Portugal once again become the dominant nations will Andalusia re reconquer Iberia and convert it to Sunni or will some of these small nations over here decide to go on and become great powers. Leave your predictions in the comments below and we'll check back in in 1480. So now it's 1480 and surprisingly, very surprisingly, all nations that we created are still alive, but they look very different. So let's take a look at all the changes. Oh my bad, they're not all still alive. Aragon is gone. Hmm. Well, Starting off in the south with Andalusia, I honestly thought they would do really well. I think they were like the second most powerful nation in Iberia after Portugal, but I guess all of these guys up here ganged up on them and not even their alliances with Morocco and Tlemcen could save them from the Catholic nations such as Portugal and Castile. And now they're down to just these two provinces right here, this one and this one. Going over to our biggest expander, probably Portugal they've taken these three provinces up here from Galicia this one over here from Asturias and these three down here from Andalusia of course Galicia has now shrunk to just this one province Asturias has shrunk to this province and Lyon right here remains unchanged they're allied to Morocco so I don't know how they're not getting gobbled up by these other guys but hey shout out to them Navarra have also lost these two provinces over here to Castile and now they're relegated to just the province of Labourde and they're not even in the region of Iberia they are allied to Galicia and I think these nations will be leaving the map pretty soon going over to this region like I said Aragon is the first nation that has disappeared it's been split by Castile taking these two provinces and Catalonia taking these two over here Valencia down here also remains unchanged sticking to their four starting provinces they're allied to Castile so they should be safe Catalonia are allied to Andalusia and Sardinia so they're not looking too strong and Mallorca over here is also unchanged having a bunch of alliances but with smaller nations to me it's looking like this 
Portugal and Castile alliance is sort of gonna split Iberia in half, with Portugal being a bit bigger than usual. And it seems that Castile have also taken Gibraltar down here. Of course, you guys know they expanded in these provinces, these two and these two up here. So that's what things are looking like in 1480. Going over to Italy real quick to check on the guys that popped out. Naples has conquered Sicily, the Knights own Malta, and Sardinia is still alive in this province down here. Portugal have taken exploration ideas, Castile they also have taken them, let's see Andalusia economic, Galicia economic, Asturias religious, Catalonia economic, Valencia religious, and Mallorca espionage and defensive, looks like they're pretty ahead in tech. We'll see what the next 50 years hold for us when we check back in in 1530. So now it's 1530, let's take a look at everything that's changed in the past 50 years, where we can see that a lot more nations have disappeared, and the strongest ones have grown even more. Portugal, we have them right here, still owning these provinces down here, but now they've expanded even more in the north, wiping out Galicia and Asturias completely, and even taking Leon, the capital of Leon from Lyon. Over here we have Navarra still existing, they are now a vassal of France, but hey, at least they're still alive, Aragon of course is gone, and Valencia is gone as well, having succumbed to the might of Castile. They're allied to Brittany and Portugal by the way, and they have started colonizing, we'll check that soon. Catalonia still exists, they are just allied with Sardinia once again, but this time they are guaranteed by Castile, so we'll see what happens there, but at least they're still alive. And here we have Mallorca, just chilling the entire him fighting the Ottomans, Riaz on Syria, Fezan, Milan, Saluzzo, Padua, and Trent due to some of their unfortunate alliances is what I'm guessing, but at least they're still here. Like I said, Lyon is just chilling, they do have an alliance with France, so that may help them out later in conquering something, but at least just for now it is keeping them alive. I don't think Castile or Portugal will dare declare on them while they're allied to France, and France is looking pretty strong. Like I said, colonization has started, let's take a look at the new world, we have Castilian Brazil down here, some other Castilian province over here, let's see if Portugal is doing something, and yes, they do seem to be colonized the Caribbean. Nothing in North America just yet. And some provinces in Africa right here. We can see that Castile owns those. Aside from that, the Reformation has spawned. It is looking pretty regular so far. We got three centers of Reformation over here, another three up here, and it's still early to tell if it will be strong or weak, but England has gone Anglican. No Great Britain just yet, and we have Danish Britain, so that's pretty fun. But man, look at the Ottomans. 1530, look how powerful they are. This is the type of AI that I like to see and I'm super super happy with the way huge nations work in 1.32. Muscovy is always powerful, the Ottomans are always powerful, surprisingly the Timurids win versus their vassals 9 out of 10 times, Uzbek's looking good too, Ming has already blown up and look at Adjuran man, shout out Adjuran as well. But that's what things are looking like in 1530 in Iberia, will the Portuguese Castilian alliance continue to dominate towards the rest of the game, will Andalusia manage to claw back? what they've lost. They do have some alliances so they may survive but we'll see. Will Leon do something? Will Catalonia do something? Will Mallorca just continue to hang out in the Balearic Islands for the rest of the game? I guess we'll have to see. We'll check back in in 1580. So now it's the 1580s and we've had some massive massive developments in Iberia. Let's jump right in where we can notice that Castile has grown and shrunk at the same time. What's up with that? Well, first of all, they've expanded down here in the North Morocco area, taking all of these provinces from obviously Morocco. They even have these two down here, which is excellent. But up in the north, they have lost some provinces to Lyon and France. So it looks like my question of whether Lyon will grow due to their alliance with France has been answered with the word yes. Lyon took these three provinces from Castile and France has taken these two. Navarra obviously is gone, they've been integrated by France. Catalonia has also expanded in this one province over here, maybe they had it earlier but I just forgot, I don't know. But they have alliances with some small-ish nations, luckily they're still doing alright. Mallorca is just chilling, maybe they're doing a tall game or something, let's take a look at their ideas. Espionage, defensive, economic, religious, not very good picks for what they're doing but oh well, Sardinia have also seemed to reconsolidate it, but they're not in our focus. Andalusia has lost some provinces here to Castile, but they've gained some provinces back here from, I think, Portugal. I don't know how that happened, but maybe it was with the help of the Ottomans, because now they have allied the Ottomans, and the Ottomans are 
massive look at them dude 1580 and they own all of this that's what i like to see that's what i like to see i wonder if they'll grow more or if their decline will start pretty soon because i have seen them decline in quite a few games recently they also have provinces in italy going back to iberia to take a look at the biggest development portugal not only have they allied the ottomans but they've gotten great britain as a junior partner it seems that they had the two doors on their throne well they actually still have them that was britain's dynasty and they have pu'd great britain they are loyal for now with only 25 percent liberty desire but man i have never seen this nation be this powerful so huge shout out to portugal man they're still allied to castile by the way and like i said they allied the ottomans and they got great britain in a pu if this was 131 i wouldn't be confident in their abilities but in 132 we know that the ai is super confident and goes for everything that they can take and i'm expecting to see portugal dominate even further going down the line going down to south america we have castile colonizing brazil and argentina we have france colonizing over here portugal have almost completely colonized the Caribbean with even Lyon having a province here along with Andalusia so a lot of the Iberian nations are colonizing very nice to see some Portuguese provinces over here and some British well British and Portuguese provinces up here along with Castilian Canada so that's nice to see oh we have a nice little federation going of course the natives are much better in 1.32 so much more manageable but they do seem to be doing well at least in terms of 1.32 this is what the reformation looks like pretty regular I'm satisfied with it Great Britain has come back to being Catholic, I guess they were forced by Portugal, but yeah, that's what that is looking like. So, Iberian nations getting more powerful, well, some getting more powerful, some weaker, Ottomans are huge, Russia is huge, Britain getting PU'd, France is pretty strong, we'll see what the next 50 years hold for us when we check back in in 1630 in the Age of Absolutism. So now is the 1630s, we are in the Age of Absolutism, let's take a look at everything that's happened. Zooming right into Iberia, we can notice quite a lot of changes, and Andalusia is being occupied by Norway? What's that all about? We'll get back into it. But first, let's start off with Portugal. We can see that they haven't made, well, any conquests in Iberia. So let's go over to the New World and see what they've done over there. Okay, in South America, nothing out of the ordinary. Ooh, but they have the Caribbean. They have almost all of Mexico. We got Louisiana here, even New Portugal. And of course, Britain's colonies are their colonies. But since Britain got PU'd, they haven't really been colonizing too much. Or maybe they have, but I just can't find it. But I don't think so. Either way, Portugal are looking pretty good these are their possessions in the new world going back to iberia leon still allied with france now allied with portugal as well and with majorca they're chilling they haven't expanded aside from that we can notice that aragon has popped out once again no alliances they're protestant talk about cursed either way i think france made a steel release them in the war where they took just this province by the way speaking of castile they're in a war with catalonia right now and they're trying to conquer these provinces over here but castile did lose another war to andalusia in fact i think it was two wars where andalusia took like some provinces down here and then in the second war they took a couple of more and now they look like this i think they're even bigger than what they started out with but now you guys can see silly with a very strong general is sieging down malacca and this is occupied by norway what's up with that well we have the andalusian norwegian colonial war that's right everyone andalusia declared war on norway for this province right here guadalupe it's owned by norway norway's independent by the way not looking too strong themselves though lots of nations colonizing in the caribbean we have holland right here norway owning these two provinces great britain even leon and even andalusia speaking of leon they also colonized some stuff down here shout out leon but that's what andalusia are looking like man thanks to the help of the ottomans they defeated castile but now they're losing to norway omegalol i can't believe it i can't believe it majorca is still alive in this province and this province their capital has been taken over by Tlemcen of all nations so shout out to them for surviving and yeah they're allied to andalusia and morocco looking good for them the ottomans are looking even more huge nothing can stop them at this point can the timurids from the mughals probably not Jampur is pretty powerful we have ajran they may form somalia shun is dominating what is even going on in china i'll never know bukhara is huge russia can't fight them because they're allied to the ottomans and that's what things are looking like right now the reformation ended this is what it looks like pretty cursed we got some protestant down here austria is reformed yeah talk about cursed we'll check back in in 16 
1680. So now it's the 1680s and we've had another massive map change this time. It seems like these guys all the time, man. Every time I jump back in, something is totally different. This time, it seems that Castile, well, look at that. They're powerful again and they're a lot more powerful than last time. They've managed to re-ally Portugal, I guess. No other strong allies, but I guess the real place that their power came from is these massive, massive colonies that they have. Look at Castilian Brazil, look at Peru, look at La Plata. Do they have something up north? Yep, they have California, they have Alaska, and they have Canada as well. So that seems to be the source of their power and from where they could reconsolidate and reconquer almost everything that they've lost over in Iberia. It seems that they've gotten back all of these provinces over here that Andalusia took. Andalusia seems to have lost their alliance with the Ottomans this time, allied just with Morocco and Tlemcen, and even Portugal has taken some provinces from them over here. But look at Castile's expansion in the Maghreb, man. Morocco is pretty much gone. They're down to these three provinces down here, which is funny. They beat up Songhai for them. And now we got a big Ayr and Lyon over here in West Africa. But that's not where Castile's conquests ended. They also took back a bunch of provinces over here from both Lyon and France. And France seems to have been decimated quite a bit, even Portugal taking Bordeaux over here and Gascony popping out, they're not a vessel, they're an independent nation. Allied to France, Nevers seems to have popped out, we got Bar and Mainz over here, Burgundy, Brittany is looking pretty strong too, and I guess France got beaten up by Portugal, Castile and Great Britain, remember they're a junior partner of Portugal, and they just couldn't take that man, but Castile is looking powerful right now too. Lyon, they are a junior partner of France now, but they got 38k pretender rebels here, and as soon as they conquer this province down here, they're gonna be breaking free from France and I think they're gonna be gobbled up by either Portugal or Castile, whoever is the quickest. Shout out to Aragon though, Protestant, no allies, still existing. Catalonia over here, they do have France as an ally, still alive, and Mallorca are also still alive, being allied to Pisa and Brittany. The Ottomans are still looking super strong, big expansion over in Italy, they have taken over Rome, they're fighting the Commonwealth now and yeah, they're looking very powerful. Aside from Castile's colonies in South America, we also have French Colombia and Andalusia seems to have located itself here and their capital is in the province of Kuna. So Andalusia, they ran away from Iberia. This is their new home now. This is what the Caribbean looked like, Central America and North America. We'll check back in in 1730 and see who goes revolutionary. So now it's 1730 and ah yes, the tribe of the, the Akoma Federation, Federation. <laughs> This is like when Macaulay Culkin, that guy from Home Alone, changed his name from uh, Macaulay Culkin to Macaulay Macaulay Culkin Culkin. <laughs> Either way, going back to Europe, remember how I said I like the Ottomans being strong? Uh, yeah, this may be a little too strong. <laughs> we'll see though, we'll see. Either way, moving over to Iberia, we can see that Castile, well, they look about the same. They have expanded a bit down here even more and they're just fighting Clemson now in the Ottoman-Austrian imperialist war apparently, but they were just fighting Clemson earlier, taking some provinces from them. The Ottomans are right here, almost getting a border with Castile. You guys know they have half of Italy pretty much and Aragon is still alive. Shout out to Aragon, they're allied to Austria. Yes, they're Protestant and Mallorca seems to have gotten these provinces back from Clemson. Castile made them give it back to them, so shout out Mallorca. And a big shout out to Sardinia as well for surviving the whole game, even though they were just a byproduct of our scenario. Lyon is still chilling, they got some nice alliances going, I don't think they'll be conquered by the end of the game, and Portugal of course is even more powerful. Both of these nations' strengths come mainly from the new world at this point in the game, and going over to North America, it's completely colonized by both of them. Of course I'm counting the British colonies as Portuguese ones, but we have Louisiana, Mexico, owned by Portugal, Newport, Portugal, these two colonies up here are Castiles, Castilian California, Portuguese Mexico. The only big colony that's not theirs is French Colombia right here and we got well, Norway proper, <laughs> I guess they don't have any colonies, I guess this is just directly owned by them, except of course for the Norwegian West Indies. But you are in the age of revolutions, these nations, they're gonna start getting more and more liberty desire, and some of them, honestly, they might be breaking free. We have been seeing that quite often, so I think we'll see it this game as well. Andalusia, are they still alive? No, they don't seem to be. They had Martinique up to a few years ago, but not anymore. Lyon still has some colonies though, and of course they have big, big possessions over here in West Africa, along with the French and even the Norwegians. In South Africa, we have the Portuguese and Castilians and over in Southeast Asia and Australia, it's mostly owned by Portugal with some British provinces as well. Someone from Persia too, so shout out to them. 
them, I guess the Timurids flopped. But that's what things are looking like at 1730. Has the revolution spawned? Let's check the map and the revolution doesn't seem to have spawned just yet. Although we still have about 100 more years left to go. So we'll see if it does spawn. By the way, Portugal, they aren't integrating Great Britain for some reason. Do they not have the dip points? Who knows, man? Who knows? Either way, we'll check back in in 1780 and see what's happened until then. So now it's 1780, the revolution is in full swing. Let's take a look at what's going on in Iberia, where actually the revolution spawned. That's right, everyone, it spawned right here in Madrid, which is the capital of, well, now revolutionary Spain. Even though I think they were still Castile? How do they go from Castile to Spain? Don't they need some provinces here? Either way, let's not get bogged down with specifics because Portugal is also revolutionary that's right and they have expanded even more over here in france for some reason i guess when these guys have somewhere to expand they do instead of just sitting around in their regular provinces while being allied to castile slash spain but they've taken a lot of provinces over here from leon as well who is still alive by the way in these three provinces up here and let's not forget about their west african and central african holdings either so a very powerful leon this game surviving even in Iberia, all through almost the end game while also having massive conquests in Africa. So shout out to them. They even have some uh, Caribbean provinces. That's right, Caribbean provinces. Aside from that, in Europe, Ottomans are blobbing out even more. We have Magdeburg and Mainz, but we'll check in on those guys later when we wrap up because now revolutionary Portugal is in a war versus its colonies, the Caribbean, Louisiana, and Mexico. And this is what that is looking like. Going over in the Great Powers, both Mexico and Louisiana are on the Great Powers list, so super powerful nations right here, man. They are simply huge, and I think they, in the New World, can beat up the rest of the Portuguese and British colonies, such as New Portugal, the 13 colonies, and Newfoundland, but if Britain and Portugal manage to bring their troops over from Europe to the New World, I think uh, they are going to be more powerful than them. So we'll see what happens there. Aside from that, no changes in South America. Let's see if any of these guys, Spain's colonies are rebellious, but it doesn't seem like it. So only Portugal seems to be having trouble with that. And that's what things are looking like right now. This is the revolution. France might go revolutionary too, and maybe some other European nations. But yeah, I guess we'll have to see when we check in for our final time in 1821. And now it's January 3rd, 1821, the end of this scenario where we took a look at what would happen if the Iberian regions were united in 1444. And this is what Iberia looks like in 1821. The western portion is owned by revolutionary Portugal, the northern portion owned by Leon, Spain has been shrunk once again, Aragon has popped out once again, we have Catalonia right here and Clemson of all nations owning the Catalonian and Valencian coast. I swear to it, every time we've checked back in, it's just something else, man. In this video, you never knew what to expect. Spain blobbing at one point, then they shrunk, then Portugal were strong, then they shrunk, now they're strong again. Andalusia grew and shrunk about five times, Aragon popped out about 20 times, Sardinia is still surviving, shout out Sardinia, Majorca was chilling here the entire game, now they're gone, and finally Catalonia has come back with Valencia, Asturias, and Galicia being the only nations that are gone. And this is what the situation looks like over here in Iberia right now. Over in the Maghreb, Spain has expanded over there, but they have lost quite a few provinces to Clemson over here and Portugal, I guess they were fighting, I don't know what's up with that. And over north of Iberia, in the French region, we have Laborde owned by Spain and some provinces over here owned by Portugal. Their main power base, of course, was outside of Europe in the New World and going over first to North America. Of course, you guys know that Great Britain were a junior partner of Portugal, they still are, and they just now started to be integrated. Of course, that won't finish because the game is done. But in North America, we still have Pacifico Norte, a colony of Spain. Canada broke free from Spain, now they're independent. We have Newfoundland, they're a British slash Portuguese colony. New Portugal, a Portuguese colony. The 13 colonies, a British slash Portuguese colony. Louisiana, they didn't get their independence, but they're massive. We also have Spanish California, another Spanish colony. Portuguese Mexico, they didn't get their independence either. The Caribbean, they didn't get their independence either. So Portugal did manage to keep a hold of their colonies. The same can't be said for Castile, since they did lose out Newfoundland and all their South American colonies as well. Brazil, Peru, and Chile, they're independent, with even France keeping a hold of their French Columbia colony. 
Over here we have Andalusia. Oh my god, they still exist. Shout out to Andalusia, the dictatorship with their capital still in the province of Kuna in the New World. They're losing a war to France right now, but man, I didn't know. They survived until the end of the game. Shout out Andalusia, what else can I say? In the Caribbean, we also have Lyon colonizing and Norway, Great Britain too. We had some Andalusian provinces here too, but most of it is owned by Portugal. Oh, we even have new provinces. Hello, hello. But our main surprise this game, Lyon, man, strong alliance all the time with friends with other nations too looking like they're gonna die at any point coming back they don't even own any of their original provinces and growing and shrinking and growing and shrinking the entire game they own this massive portion of western africa huge expansion from them over there and they own a very big portion of central africa as well so once again shout out to them in southern africa we have half divided by Portugal and Spain and over in Southeast Asia we have other Portuguese colonies as well such as Portuguese Australia and some provinces being owned right here. And that is what our Iberian nations have been up to. Aside from that Britain got PU'd by Portugal, France had an alright game, they're revolutionary now, they weren't too strong being strong and weak at different points in the game. We have Savoy and Milan being successful in Italy, Tuscany formed, shout out to Sardinia once again and the Ottoman zone half of Italy. Over in the HRE Mainz and revolutionary Magdeburg are the biggest winners along with Lubeck. Over here we have Norway. Russia blew up at some point. Look at this massive, massive Bukhara who's been allied to the Ottomans the entire game. I'm guessing they, along with the Ottomans, beat up Russia and Russia blew up. Now they look like this. Otherwise, they were pretty huge. Once again, the biggest MVP for this campaign, aside from the nations we were focusing on, the Ottomans. They are just so, so massive. What else do you want me to say about them, man? so powerful going down to africa we have some other nations here being regular but ajuan really strong game from them and from mombasa sofala and mahafali as well so shout out to those nations in the middle east someone from persia but we have a strong Khorasan and baluchistan as well the timurids were pretty big for almost the entire game but then they blew up over in india usually split by four nations this time it's only two with the north being owned by delhi along with tibet and southwest portions of china and more than half of india mainly in the south is owned by gujarat in south Southeast Asia we have a strong Malacca, Ayutthaya and Khmer are alright, Ming of course blew up with most of China being owned by Wu and even Oirat is present here. The Manchurian tribes didn't do too well and we have Korea owning half of Japan with Bukhara owning a very very significant portion of Asia and that is what the world is looking like. Going into the religious map mode nothing too cursed, the reformation was pretty strong at the start but now it's not very strong, Aragon is still protestant, we have Lubeck being protestant but aside from that most of the new world is catholic because Portugal forced Great Britain to become catholic, aside from that nothing weird in the religious map mode oh uh japan or korea went catholic yep there we go that's something weird but aside from that everything is looking as usual even in africa this is the revolutionary map mode right now france is the revolutionary target but we have a bunch of other revolutionary nations such as portugal tuscany magdeburg and some smaller nations around the hre going into the great powers list we have the ottomans being a military hegemon of course who'd have thunk it then they're also at the number one spot followed by revolutionary portugal gujarat delhi malacca revolutionary magdeburg bukhara and revolutionary france going into the ledger the the Ottomans have the biggest army with 400,000 troops followed closely by Gujarat, then Delhi, Great Britain, Portugal, Brazil, France, Bukhara, Malacca, Mainz, Wu, Portuguese, Mexico, and so on. In the income comparison, the Ottomans have the biggest income in the world with almost 900 ducats, and with less than half of that we have Great Britain followed by Gujarat, Brazil, Malacca, Revolutionary Portugal, Delhi, Bukhara, Chile, Mainz, and so on. So what would happen if the Iberian regions were united in 1444? Well, obviously we expected some of the biggest nations such as Portugal, Castile and Andalusia to dominate, but Castile and Andalusia, at the end, they are super weak. They're not even on the great powers, and the only nation from those that managed to succeed is Portugal with keeping a hold of their colonies and expanding quite a bit in Iberia. But of course this was sort of expected since they were the most powerful nation, so I'm gonna give the MVP award to Lyon, and their capital is probably not even in Iberia, yes. It's in Western Africa right here in Sierra Leone. So definitely the biggest surprise this campaign is Lyon from their expansion and shrinking all the time in Iberia. And shout out to their massive possessions in Africa. 
and shout out to all the nations that popped out, such as Aragon and Catalonia. So, what would happen if the Iberian regions were united in 1444? Well, Leon would colonize Africa. Let me know in the comments below what's the next what if scenario that I should do. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, then you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Red Hawk live, and you can catch up on everything that goes on over there on the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more what if videos or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.